Welcome to Through the Back Loop. This is a knitting podcast and um, just wanted to say Happy New Year to all of you. Happy 2021. I think we're all ready to move forward, move towards the light, move towards a more positive year uh, because, wow, what a year it has been. Um, you know, I think we're all ready to see 2020 come to a close. My name is Peggy Richards Patty. I come to you from Oceanside, California, and uh, just wanted to welcome you, whether you're a new viewer or if you're a returning viewer. I really appreciate you uh, spending a little time with me today. I was looking back through my last podcast and I realized it was way back um, November 18th. So I apologize for my absence, but that happens from time to time. It was a really busy holiday season. Um, our family was able to spend it together since we all are pretty much at home. Everybody works from home. We tested, quarantined, whole nine yards, and then we were able to form a little bubble. So I've been one of the really, truly lucky people that has been able to have their, their children around and... Uh, I'm really super grateful for that. Know that there's so many people that were not lucky enough to be in that situation. So um, I've been so busy just kind of celebrating and enjoying the holidays. Um, and I'll share some pictures with you at the end like I always do. But uh, Happy New Year uh, 2021. As I kind of prepared for the podcast, I kind of looked back through my Ravelry um, projects page and realized um, lots of different things. It was interesting. Um, I uh, figured out that I actually made a more, I did more knitting than I've ever done in any other single year before. And, um, you know, again, it's, you know, not that I, I, I knit all the time, no matter what year it is, but this year of COVID and year of, you know, staying inside, um, you know, knitting once again saved my life. <laughs> so super, you know, grateful um, that again, that, that, you know, we share and have this hobby that, that keeps us so um, inspired and occupied at the same time. So once again, my knitting saved me. And as I looked back through the project pages, I realized that in one year, I knit eight sweaters, two of them are cardigans, three shawls, 11 pairs of socks, mostly because um, I knit, for the holidays, I knit seven pairs of socks for my family. Um, I don't normally knit 11 pairs of socks in one year, but this year I did. Uh, one cape, three hats, and one um, pair of mittens. So it was a big year. <laughs> and... Um, I was just kind of trying to reflect on um, what I noticed, what trends I saw, and as I looked back through my last year of knitting, and one, the first thing that stood out to me was that I knit way too many things that were pink and blue. And I know as I sit here in my Christmas sweater that I'll talk to you about in just a second, you know, it's pink too. Um, but then if you look back through the previous year, I had knit so many things that were gray and so many things that were um, very um, neutral colored. So I guess 2020 was a year that I kind of uh, just added more color, which I love, but at the same time, it was just too much pink and blue. So I'm gonna kind of, you know, take a break on that for a while. So it was too much pink and blue. I have a tendency to wear what's really, really cozy. So, um, and I kind of already knew that. Um, so I, I think I need to really think about what fibers I'm using and and the styles need to be like really simple things that I can just, you know, throw on and, and wear all day long and be super comfortable in. Because the, the things that are not um, pretty simple and pretty cozy just aren't getting as much wear. Uh, another thing that I think I learned from my 2020 knitting was occasionally think outside of the box. And I was reminded of that when I looked at my project page on the Arnt 
uh, that my aunt, that I knit with my neighbor, Angela, because she was the one that kind of picked the pattern and, and I wouldn't have done it. And it's one of my favorite knits of the year. Just, it's a little jazzier. So, you know, on one hand, I guess I'm saying I need to knit really simple, cozy things, but once in a great while, you know, break out and do something different. So that was one of my more uh, favorite knits of the year. And then the other thing I think that knitting has taught me this year is, and I kind of already knew this one too, but um, don't plan too far out. Don't plan too far in advance. Um, I'm looking down at some of my stash that I love. I have the pattern for it. I have the sweater quantity. And if I get too many things piled up, um, it always never fails. Something else beautiful catches my attention, catches my eye, and then it doesn't get knit. So I, I sh really shouldn't purchase things too far in advance. I shouldn't be more than about three sweaters out or else I just get behind because you can't knit everything. And so, um, you know, I probably, as I'm looking at 2021, probably need to do kind of a stash down and which is to me the hardest thing in the world to do because if you're on Instagram and, <clears throat> you know, social media, you just see all the pretty things and something's going to grab your attention and all of a sudden go to the front of your queue. So, Anyway, I need to, you know, not buy too much yarn, not more than three or four at the most projects out. Otherwise, it it just kind of languishes and goes cold. Uh, if you hear barking, that is Ollie, my beagle. And, um, you know, there he goes. Every time I podcast, he does this. So hopefully he'll settle down. <laughs> okay, um, so... Moving on to what I'm wearing today. This is the pink velvet. This is by Andrea Mowry. It was my Christmas sweater and um, I love it. It wasn't as easy. I heard a lot of people say it was super easy. I wouldn't, it really wasn't for me um, because um, this, uh, the white part here is Surrey Alpaca and it's from Blue Sky Fiber. It's very fluffy, and when I did this pattern, um, there's Ollie. I don't know if you can see him. Oh, he's sitting behind me. Uh, when I did this pattern, the alpaca was um, very fluffy, and the the uh, yarn that I paired it with, this is, um, let's see, what's it called? Olan, and it's called Smoked Sock. And this would get, when I was doing the yoke, it would get embedded and a stitch would get, if I got off one, it would be really hard to rip back out and um, and find my stitches. The pink kind of kept getting embedded into the white surrey. And so, you know, and there were a couple of times that I got off a little bit on the pattern and I thought, oh, well, I can fudge. But no, this really isn't the kind of pattern that you can fudge. I mean, if you get off, it really, really, really shows. So I had to tear back a couple times, and it wasn't very fun to do that. Uh, I'm really happy with the finished product, but um, it, was, it was interesting. It starts off, it's top down, and this was a tubular cast on. And tubular cast on is a lot more work than most cast ons, but I... You know, I do love a lot. I really love tubular cast on. I, I do it almost for everything because it makes it so stretchy. But in this particular case, it made it way too stretchy. And I, I don't know if you saw a previous podcast I started showing. I knew it was going to happen. It turned into more like a boat neck uh, neckline. And so what I ended up doing when I was all done, I went back and I did a, a crochet edge that kind of tightened everything back up. And I had to do that, otherwise it was just too floppy. And um, so, you know, went to all that work with the tubular cast on, and then it was all for nothing because I go back later and tighten it up. Uh, it also has a tubular on the sleeves, and I always like my sleeves about this length. I don't know if they call that bracelet, but um, some people like long sleeves, some people like three quarter. I really like it here because my arms are warm but it's not in my way like if I'm cooking or knitting or doing something else. I also was able to customize the arms for my length, which is something that I've gotten better at this year and not just following the pattern, but um, 
you know, especially with top down, you can try it on as you go and, and kind of decide your decreases and, um, you know, really customize it to the length of your arms. I happen to have, I guess, kind of short arms because all my sweaters before I started doing that, you know, the sleeves were just way, way too long and sleeves always seem to grow. So anyway, I'm, I am happy with that part, but this yoke, um, the gauge, I think sort of changed. Like when I look at this pattern, uh, on the project pages on Ravelry, on all the other projects, people's projects, there, I think the row gauge changed with this Surrey because it was so thick. Most people like the, the uh, pattern, the yoke stops up here. And for me, it goes all the way down to my bust, kind of mid bust. So anyway, it, it fits me probably a little bit different than the, than Andrea Mallory intended, but I'm, I'm super happy with it now that I'm finished. And, um, Linda, uh, from, uh, for the fun of knit, uh, and I did a knit along and, um, I'm going to put that down below because if you did a holiday sweater, any kind of holiday sweater, and you were finished, if you were less than 50% started by November 1st, and you finished it by December 31st, so you still have a little bit more to go, we are going to do a drawing on, which would be tomorrow. And uh, I'm giving away actually two skeins. I thought it was one, but I found another skein. So I'm giving two skeins of yarn and a hat pattern of your choice. And then she's going to draw as well. So you could double dip. I don't have hardly anybody entered into that, um, into that knit along. I had uh, somebody contact me uh, and they tried to post on that on there and they couldn't get it to work. So I had her send me the picture and I'm going to enter it into the contest. Um, but there aren't very many people entered. So if you did some, some kind of festive uh, sweater knitting, um, you know, for yourself, or I guess it could be for anyone, but an adult sweater, you know, please join in before, um, oh gosh, when am I going to get this up? Now, I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, I will try to get this video up before I do the drawing. I'll do that. Um, anyway, so this was my Christmas sweater. I'm happy with it. Um, I'm sure I'll get a lot of good out of it this winter because it is very cozy and comfy. It is kind of a crop. Uh, I made mine a little bit longer than the original pattern calls for. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to show you. So mine comes about hip length and it's all crooked on me. Um, so I did add, and surprisingly, my yarn went um, went a long way because I had three skeins of, of this Olan, and uh, it's a light fingering, and I actually ended up with one skein left. So it, it went a long way. I was kind of surprised. Uh, I guess I'll have to put the extra skein in a shawl or something. But anyway, so I will make sure that I post... Um, down below all the particulars of the Instagram and um, and the Cal and you know wow talk about having a good chance of winning you really have a great chance of winning because not that many people have have posted uh, so anyway that was some of my holiday knitting um, first finished object uh, another one, and if you've been watching my episodes, you've, you're probably sick to death of these. Uh, I made uh, Christmas socks for everybody in my family. These happen to be mine. Um, it's the yours and mine socks. And I did, uh, these are DK, so they go really fast. Uh, top down, it has the bird's eye heel flap. I think that's what it's called. And um, I made 14 individual socks and wow I I won't be doing that again for several years even though it was DK and it went fast that was still a lot of 14 socks is a lot of socks so maybe that's another reason I didn't podcast I was just knitting all those socks so um made seven pairs of those and uh I'm really glad that I started as far in advance as I did I can't remember I think I started knitting back in October and it's a good thing I did because I never would have um, gotten finished 
in time if I wouldn't have started back then. Uh, another finished object, and I'm going to have to put a picture up here. I made a hat called the Watch Cap by Pearl Soho, and I ended up giving it to my daughter. Um, it was after Christmas I gave it to her. It's made out of this beautiful yarn uh, from Pearl Soho that's called Simply Yak, and it's 100% yak. It's sort of showing a little bit darker on this monitor than it really is. It's not black. It's it's a, like a soft brown, and it's like coming out kind of dark brown. But this was another perfect example of something catching your attention and jumping uh, in front of the queue. I think Pearl Soho had maybe a 20% off sale or something, and I was just so drawn to the yak, and it is super soft. The finished product is not is kind of sort of a fail because I didn't check my gauge. I just went with the pattern. I thought, oh, it's a hat. And I don't know about you guys, but I always, I heard somebody say one time, you knit a hat and then you try to find a head for it to fit. Um, and I thought, originally I thought it was either going to go to my son or my daughter's boyfriend, but both of them tried it on and it was kind of too big. But then my daughter styled it and did all these funny things with it. And so she's, she's taking it. I don't know if she's going to end up wearing it that much, but... Um, the fiber is beautiful. I may go ahead and make an, a pair of um, fingerless mitts out of the leftovers because I think I have two skeins left. Um, but anyway, it was, you know, something that caught my eye and it's somewhat of a disappointment since it was kind of big. So I guess I should have checked that gauge. Should have gone down a needle size and it, it would have worked out better. Okay, so that moves us on. Gosh, um, trying to think of what else I want to say before we move on. I don't know if I said the color. It doesn't matter. It's obviously white, although um, this Surrey alpaca is called whipped cream, and that kind of drew me to the color as well. Um, anyway, moving on to whips, I am making another... Uh, cape like the first one I did. I did one of these already for my daughter. This is the Harbor. It's by Britt Marie Brem uh, Bremer. And as you can see, I'm just getting started on it. It's a um, uh, it's a Shibui yarn. There's two yarns held together. One of them's called Haven, which is like a worsted weight. And that might be more like a DK weight haven. And um, I'm holding it together with uh, Sema. It's another yarn by uh, Shibui. And I did a different colorway for my daughter. And talk about cozy. That thing is so cozy that I knew as soon as I finished hers that I was going to have to do one for myself. Um, this particular color is called Tar and uh, just got started with it. So this will be probably my first make a uh, finished object of 2021 uh, because I, I have a tendency to be a monogamous knitter. So I probably won't, uh, I maybe will cast on maybe a pair of socks on the side, but probably I usually stick with, with uh, a project as soon as I as soon as I started, I stick with it. And uh, so that'll probably be my first finished object of 2021. I uh, wanted to talk just a minute about kind of some fun knitting um, events that I participated in. The first one was uh, Knit and Escape uh, put on by Christy Glass. I And I didn't get to catch all of the fun things like Oh gosh, they had, um, I think they had a pajama party and they had a bunch of cool things that I actually ended up getting busy and missed out on. Um, but I did take a brioche class and, um, and it was a good class. Um, I guess like it would have been really good if you had never taken brioche and I'm, a, I'm familiar, you know, I have done a little bit of beginning brioche. Um, the class was very basic. I was really hoping that they were going to go into the increases and decreases because that's really where I'm at and what I really need to, to learn. Because one of these days I want to do 
the holy um, shawl by um, Stephen West. And so I've really got to get those increases and decreases down. Um, so the, the class was great if you were new. Um, so I'm sure a lot of people got a lot of good out of it. Um, but the, the teacher was great. The format was good. Uh, I wish I could have taken advantage of some of the other uh, events they had. Um, I was able to catch the tour of the Roxbury Hotel, which is amazing. And I think Christy Glass is doing a um, her you know retreat next fall, and that would be so fun. That would be so fun, but um, not in the cards for me uh, in 2021. And then the other. Um, event that I've been able to participate a little bit is I'm a member of the San Diego Knitting Guild and they have moved virtual as well and um, you know it's not the same I, I loved that I, I had been a member of the guild about a year before COVID hit and so I was able to um, go to quite a few different meetings and it was um, you know it was a little bit of a drive maybe about a 45 minute drive for me uh, to get down there but um, I loved it because it's a huge guild I mean they have like at the meetings would be like a hundred people and it was like you know it's like going to any um, retreat or whatever like just to see all the sweaters and talk to people you know see them on real people and talk to real people that have knit them and so I do really miss um, miss that and they've given it their very best shot with the virtual meetings and the zooms but it's not it's not the same um so hopefully looking forward to um that changing and and becoming a little more uh regular life uh, i know it's still going to be a ways probably i don't know maybe by fall it'll start start happening again but um i haven't taken any classes but uh, the one in january Trying to remember who the person is. They they have some great instructors, and I know February's Melanie Berg. Um, so I'm really uh, considering taking one of her classes. I can't think of the person that's there in in January. But one thing is, I mean, they always had great speakers and really good instructors too. Um, but you know, with COVID and and the Zoom format, they can do a lot of really international teachers. So. In that respect, it's nice, but um, I look forward to just the in-person stuff again this year, hopefully. Um, and with, let's see, I was going to move on to some of the goodies I got for Christmas, uh, knitting goodies. Um, this one was a gift um, that I actually picked out myself and my husband wrap it up, but it's this cute little notebook. Uh, it's from Fancy Tiger Crafts. It's small, you can hold it in your hand, you can put it in your knitting bag. And I just, this is a new thing I'm gonna try. So I'm when I start a project, I am going to write the date that I start it and you know, just all the particular information, you know, the needle size, the yarn, the designer, and just take a few little notes. So um, when I put it on Ravelry, uh, it's all there. Because what I'm finding is uh, a lot of times I don't post on Ravelry until um, the project's completed. And every once in a while I forget, like if I take the needles out and I bind off and I let it sit for a couple of weeks, then I'm like, oh yeah, like what size needle did I end up using? And so I'm going to, you know, try to be a little bit more accurate. And I didn't want a big um, notebook because it's too bulky and you can't keep it in your knitting bag. But I thought these were really cute. And then I also sent these as a gift to a couple of my knitting friends. So um, uh, if you're interested, you can find it on Fancy Tiger Crafts. Um, they're out of Denver. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're, they're still keeping, you know, have these on their website. So that was a fun gift. Um, another one is this cool little gadget that I had asked for. My kids got me. This is, I think this is made by Acker. I'll, I'll correct that if that's not correct. Is that on there? Yeah, Acker Works. And it's a little gauge tool. So you just real quickly, you can see, you know, your row, your row gauge and your, your stitch count. And I know that Patty Lyons would not probably approve of this tool because, you know, you need to, to be really, really accurate, you need to do a lot bigger swatch and, 
you know, over a lot more stitches and a lot more rows. But if you just want to do, sometimes you just want to do get, you know, a ballpark on your um, on your needle size. Um, this is, you know, the the cheater version, and and I'm it's so simple, but what a great idea! Whoever invented it was was pretty smart. So that was another one, something that I got, and my husband also got me which was, this was a surprise. I think I was showing him something on Instagram from uh, a funny post from uh, Lola Bean um, Yarn Co. And she's really funny. I don't know if you follow her on Instagram. But anyway, I was just showing him because it was just really funny what she wrote. And um, he figured it out and went online and got me a $50 gift certificate. So I'm going to hold on to this until she has a, you know, a, a good update because I know her yarns are, you know, fly out the door really quick. But that was just so sweet that he was paying attention enough to um, just kind of do that because a lot of times I end up telling him what I want. And uh, so he wanted to make sure that there was at least a surprise. And that was very sweet. Um, let's see. Um, as far as... Uh, future knitting goes I'm thinking that my next cast on after this cape um, is probably going to be a really 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 special um, sweater that I have been waiting to um, cast on it's um, it's from a contest that I won this year from Caddy Jack's Knits and it was when the pandemic first started and they were wanting to support uh, local yarn stores. And so they said, what are in local dyers and, and just the knitting community in general. And so they said, um, if you've made a recent purchase at your local yarn store, then, you know, list it below or, or state below what you've done. I made a little post and believe it or not, I won this gorgeous cashmere Um um, I forgot to get it out. I'll try to get it out here in just a second. But anyway, I wanted to wait until the time was right and take my time. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do the pattern. Um, I got um, sweater quantity. And with that came um, a pattern, a free pattern from uh, Clinton Hill Cashmere. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to... Um, use that particular pattern or if I'm going to do something else. But I, I, I thought that I was going to knit it way before now, but um, then, you know, gift knitting came into the picture and I just wanted to wait until I could savor it and really enjoy it and not feel pressured by any deadlines or, you know, you know, hurrying up and, and finishing one thing so that I could get my, you know, my, gift knitting completed by Christmas. So um, I'm really looking forward to that in January. Just um, I'll finish up the cape and then uh, just use that scrumptious um, cashmere. Hold on. I'm going to go get it. Hold on one second. Let me dig for it. I'm not sure where it is. Hold on real quick here. I'll be right back. Here we go. I found it. Um, it's in this cool bag from Clinton Hill Cashmere. And um, I have sweater quantity of the um, this beigey tan color. Um, this is um, bespoke, and it is a DK weight. And um, talk about cozy! Um, oh my gosh, I wish you could feel it. It's it's magnificent. And um, so I'm I'll I'll try to put a picture up of the pattern that that comes it was like a kit and the free pattern came with it uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to use that one or a different one the jury's still out on that but um, I cannot wait to just savor this and um, um, you know as soon as I'm finished as soon as I'm finished with my cozy um, cape then I will be I I'm just realizing it's it's two solids in a row so I'll probably be really um, hungry for a color work sweater after two solid projects like that. 
But um, anyway, I've been waiting. I've been waiting for the right time when I could just really enjoy this, and I'm so looking forward to it. Um, I wanted to tell you, and I'll include a little uh, video uh, of it. Another thing I made um, in the last month is I uh, made two slip covers for some chairs that were in a room in our house that was just, <laughs> it was kind of the last room to really um, get much attention. We've lived in this house for four years and we have spent so much time on other parts of the house and it was somewhat of a fixer-upper type house. It had great bones and great light, but um, it was really dated. So we spent so much time on, on trying to update things. And there's this one room um, and it just looked like, you know, it had kind of some odd furniture in there. And these two chairs were nice chairs. I mean, I haven't had them that long, but they just look so blah in there. And I made two slip covers and uh, kind of jazzed it up a little bit. And we put a Christmas tree in there. And uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll share the video of that because, boy, that was a that was a head scratcher. Um, I had only I had done a couple of slip covers many, many years ago. Um, and I. So I had a little bit of experience from those, but gosh, that was decades ago. And I um, looked at a craftsy class on slipcovers and I got some more really good pointers, although their pieces were completely different than um, what I was doing. But anyway, um, I did it. I pulled it off. I was so happy. I had this fabric probably for way more than a year and I had gotten it at Joanne and it was like, you know, on sale. So I got all the fabric for like a hundred dollars. And actually I was so afraid of not having enough fabric that I overbought and I have a ton of it left. But, um, anyway, it was a real, uh, um, uh, feeling of accomplishment because I finally did it. It pulled the room together and, um, it kind of got me interested in sewing again. So maybe the next, uh, I'm going to podcast again really, really soon because I want to announce the winner of the knit along, the, um, the holiday sweater knit along. Um, so I will be back on here really soon in just a few days, but, um, I maybe in my next, you know, bigger podcast, I will have done some sewing. I hope so. Cause I really enjoy sewing too. Um, and with that, I'm, um, short episode. I should have more for as long as I've been gone. Um, but I, I do want to include just some fun videos, um, just of the holiday season, just some of the highlights. And I want to wish you a happy new year and I hope you're staying healthy and well and are excited about a brand new year and all the great changes. And we're going to start getting our lives back again. So uh, with that, I'll say goodbye and uh, I'll see you soon because I'm going to announce that winner. So have a great evening, a great morning, afternoon, wherever you are in the day and a fantastic new year. Bye-bye. Okay, so I wanted to show this chair that I'm getting ready to cover. I actually have two of them. Here's one. That's what it originally looks like. And I've already started working on this one. So I'm gonna make a slip cover for this. And as you can see on this one over here, I have to fill in these areas with um, like some batting and then put muslin over that so it's not all lumpy. And I'm planning on using this fabric. So we'll see how it goes.